Hello again, and welcome to another episode of The Missing and Abducted. Sorry, my co-hosts, uh, from Justin from J-Ray Radio and Angel from uh, Justice Fight for Angels was not able to be here today. So we're going to go ahead with um, some of the missing found updates. Uh, baby Ava, she was found in Mexico uh, last week. And Samantha Koenig's body was also found on uh, Monday. So we're going to take you into that, these updates here. And uh, and if we have any other, other missing updates for you, we'll get them right out there for you. Um, this is going to be a short, brief show tonight because the host could not be here. So we hope that you enjoy. You take your six-year-old to the playground. You watch her go down the slide, then run over to the swings. Another mother strikes up a conversation. You take your eye on your daughter for just a few seconds. You look back at the swings, and she's gone. Your heart drops into your stomach. You jump up, your eyes are searching. You cry at her name. Lily? Lily? From the top of the slide, you hear a voice. Mommy, that's me. Every parent knows that feeling. Imagine if she were actually abducted. AmberAlerts.org. Sign up for Amber Alerts on your phone. An Amber Alert is issued in the areas you've chosen. You'll receive a free text message. If you spot the vehicle, the suspect, or the child described in the alert, call 911. Sign up today at WirelessAmberAlerts.org. A child is calling for help. This message brought to you by the Wireless Foundation, the U.S. Department of Justice, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and the Ad Council. of the missing and abducted. Most often, when a child is abducted, the media will be reluctant to tell a story about the alleged abduction of a child. According to the State Department statistics, there are about 3,000 children currently missing who have been abducted by a parent and taken out of the U.S. illegally, and this is a growing phenomenon. Every day, a child is suddenly ripped from the life they know, whether it be parental or abduction. And it should be our responsibility as citizens to help bring awareness to our abducted children and the major impact that it has on the families that are left behind. And that is why we have this talk show raising awareness to child abduction and giving left behind parents of parental and stranger abductions the opportunity to explain their stories to the general public and their journey to find their affected children. And I'm your host from SYM Radio and the yes Man. Welcome, I'm your host for The Missing and Abducted today. And then we have some uh, good, some great breaking news. Uh, Ava Engel has been found. She was found on Friday. Father accused of taking this three year old daughter to Mexico to hide is now facing charges. Police said Brent Anderson. What you see here in this photo, failed to drop off three-year-old Ava Enloe after a custodial visit last month. According to the police report, Anderson and his wife took a bus to Culligan with plans to live with his wife's relatives. The U.S. Marshal Service, with help from the Mexican officials, tracked down the little girl in Pueblo, Pueblo Nuevo, Mexico on Friday and took Anderson into custody Saturday morning. He faces two felony counts of custody interference and one count of kidnapping. The girl was returned to her valley 
mother on Tuesday at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport after more than a month apart. The dad's mother was also on ABC Grace last night, stating that she knew her son was in Mexico, after stating a month ago on the same show that she did not know where her son was, and begging the general public for a lawyer for him. And we'll check you into that right now. Well, right now, just in, I want to go straight out on news that a baby, we have been looking for baby Ava Enlo, age two, has been found. Straight out to Dave, Matt, morning talk show host with WAAX. Dave, what can you tell me baby Ava found? Nancy, it's some of the most exciting news that we've been able to tell in a long time about a missing child. Custody with kids happens happen all the time, but in this one, as you have covered since the very beginning, baby, baby Ava went missing after her dad did not return her from a scheduled visit. They had no idea where he had gone. They knew that he had cleaned out the house, he cleaned out the bank accounts, and they found his truck at a bus depot. They had no other clues to go on, but Phoenix police working with the U.S. Marshals and the Mexican authorities tracked down baby Ava to the small town of Pueblo and Nuevo about three hours north of Mazatlan, and they were able to track down baby Ava and return her to her mother. Everybody, breaking news right now, baby Ava in there. We told you all about baby Ava. Uh, not long ago, her mom goes to pick her up at another coffee shop. Daddy never shows up with the baby. She goes to his house. They find the home cleaned up, partially moved out. No trace of the bio dad and his brand new wife. They are gone, and so is the baby. The big headline is baby Ava is alive. Baby Ava has been found, is back with her mother. You see, Daddy, they're doing the port walk. Daddy with the baby, with the new wife in Mexico. And joining me right now is Baby Ava's grandmother. This is her paternal grandmother. Linda Boris is with us exclusively. Ms. Boris, I, I, I know that you're concerned about your son tonight, but the big news is they're both alive. Baby Ava is safe. What can you tell us? Why did your son take baby Ava out of the country? Well, Nancy, first of all, let me let me put the story straight here. Take Ava and her son, it's not anyone. And um, my son takes my granddaughter out of the country to protect her. Um, if I could if I could put it up by asking an audience today to take it. Uh, please help my son, if there's an attorney out there that could help him, to uh, go through this nightmare for him, it would be much appreciated. Okay, Ms. Barrows, you, you, your son took the baby out of the country and was hiding in Mexico. Really? My friend was not. Why did your son take the. Oh, really? Because you told me when you were on my show not long ago that you had not heard from him at all. Nobody knew where he was. I guess you knew where he was all along and you didn't tell anybody. So is that true? That is absolutely correct. But my son was not trying to hide. That's why his purpose was sitting at the front My son signed his name to the ticket. If he wanted to hide, he was not at what the Red Farm Trail where he was at. Well, if they, why would you leave a trail? I, I don't understand. Leaving a Red Farm Trail, you're referring to the Spirit of Fast and Greta, where the mother was trying to kill the baby. All right, let's rethink that comparison. You were on with me on the and you told me you did not know where your son was. Now, to me, if I don't let my mind know that I am, that means I'm hiding. Let me rephrase it for you. Why did your son leave the country with baby Ava? My son ran out of the same job for six years. She has a perceived right to the father to have a judicial system. There's been a good of life saving for the last 16 years to hire an attorney so that he could follow our judicial system and um, 
and even have to borrow money from a family friend or a teacher so that they could call the, the assistant and tell it to kids so they wouldn't call my friend any longer to uh, keep her safe. We even called CPS, CPS didn't even help us. But my son is safe from what, man? She's safe from what? And if your son is not borrowing money, didn't you tell me he quit his job? A uh, surefire way to get money is to work, and I would suggest a test for a third job if you need more money. So my question is, if you needed money, why did he quit his job? Number two, you still haven't told me why he left his country with his daughter. And most importantly, you say it is your key, baby A to safe. Safe from what? Okay. That is an exclusive that I am going to give to everybody. You know, I'm going to tell you, I need for my son. And so, again, as a, one of your audience members would like to step in and have my son, I would be more than happy to give you an exclusive story to come in and understand it. And it's sick of many things that they've got right out in there. And that's the reason why the family relationship stopped in the first place. And it did not want to. I appreciate that because if my son were in trouble, I would think I could to get the best money from him. But it seems to me that if he really believes that baby daughter Ava is threatened or is in trouble, you and I are exchanging her safety for an interview. Now, why is she not safe? If she's not safe, she needs to get out of that home right now. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's why we call CPS. How come our judicial system is not working for us? We've gone to the police. We've gone to the sheriff. We've gone to all the police. Well, if you are as difficult to get the answer, I mean, I'm pulling teeth here. If she's not safe, then tell it. Let it be known. Let's get the child safe. Yeah, if your son felt he had to go and take her Mexico, he is not safe. I can't say that. I put it to CPS. My son has said it to CPS. Nobody will step in and take over. They say it's not our jurisdiction. Well, we're not going to do this. How else are we supposed to do this? The judicial system is not working for us. Nobody is listening to what we're saying. There's some serious issues for me. Well, maybe that's because you're not giving any answers, Ms. Barros. I mean, no offense, I want the baby safe, all right? But you're not giving me answers. When you say the baby's not safe, I think why, and you won't tell me why, so that you're losing all your credibility. Uh, okay, let's try insect, okay? Let's try insect. How about my granddaughter's been molested? How about we go there? How about we get some people on the show? Let's do some lie detector tests. It's all there. There was some serious issues going on in that household. I have got a lot to say. There's a lot to tell you about what is going on and what makes it come to this conclusion that it is this is what is going on. My granddaughter does not need to be in that home. Ms. Barnes, let me get this straight. Are you saying that baby Ava has been the victim of child molestation while in the custody of a mother? Yes, ma'am, I am. Have you taken her to a doctor? Yes, we have. What did the doctor say? My son has not abused her. Uh, what did the doctor say? Uh, I'm going to try one more time. Ricky is baby Ava's paternal grandma. She says she fears for the child's safety. You say the child has been molested while in the custody of her mother and that you have taken her to the doctor. Ricky, what did the doctor tell you about baby Ava? Nancy, I was not at the doctor to know what it said, and then my son fled from the country. I do not know what the conversation was between him and the doctor. Trying to okay, it. so you're on national TV saying the child's been molested, has been taken to a doctor, but that's the one fact that you don't the answer to is to whether the doctor said she's been molested. Bring her to me that it, it, that she had molested. And I don't have the records to prove it. That's all. 
group and say a possible kidnapping? I don't see it as a kidnapping. It's a custodial interference. There was never any question that this was not a kidnapping for ransom or for sexual reasons. And the headline she found alive, I think, was really misleading. I don't think she was ever in danger there. Certainly, this is caused or shattered by the mother or the rest of the family. But this is not a situation where they expected to find the body or anything like that. The guy is wrong. There's no question about it. The oh, really? Was, yeah, I don't are. think so. What about a Mark Kraft? Mark Kraft was the foundation response to Nikki Shorten? Nancy, I avoid abduction of any, in any way, shape, or form. This seems like it. But I also refuse to get engaged in any kind of a he said, she said situation. This is a matter much better than left to the courts. Well, all I know is this, Eleanor Ireland. Ron goes to pick up the baby. The baby's not there. Ron goes to the bio dad's home. It's half cleared out. He's been gone for days. Is my understanding days without letting them all know where he is, and it turns up in Mexico, Eller. That's the kidnapping. It's a kidnapping, and if you want to go with what Nikki Jones says, it's just interference with custody. Well, that's a felony, Nancy, and he can be prosecuted on that as well. And who knows what other charges there may be. This is something for the police to look at, for the prosecutor to look at, and to come up with the correct charges. Okay, Carla Bell, you know, regardless of what anybody says, you take one of my children to Mexico and don't tell me where you are. I don't care who you are. You go to jail, Carla Bell. Well, well Nancy, the first order of business is to, for Anderson's uh, sake, is for having his mother to not do any more interviews. Because one of the things here is this is considered interference would be if he had good cause, which the mother seems to suggest, that's one of the elements of defending him. And if the mother keeps trying this in the media, it's going to hurt his case. Okay, C.W. Jensen, retired Portland Police, Captain Ray in. Well, I think one thing that people forget is whether it's a custodial interference or a kidnapping. That's just what a state calls it. Um, different states have different laws. So I have the best case for custodial interferences, and I'm telling you, well, I'm so happy that uh, Ava Inla has been found and is home safe with her, her mother. Uh, now we're going to be having another update. Samantha Koenig's uh, disappearance. She was found. Her body was found in, in Alaska Lake. Uh, we'll be having that video coming up. Uh, the body of an 18-year-old coffee shop worker who vanished February 1st was found Monday by a forensic dive team in a lake north of Anchorage, Police Chief Mark Mew said. A body believed to be that of Samantha Koenig of Anchorage was recovered from Matuska Lake we said city police, state troopers, and FBI agents spent hours at the lake scene on Monday. Surveillance video on the night Koenig was last seen showed her being led away from her coffee stand by a man believed to be armed. Police said they believe the Anchorage woman died within hours of her adoption, you told a Monday evening news conference. Investigators further believed the person responsible for Samantha's death, death acted alone and are confident that we have that person in custody. I'm Blake Hanson for the Huffington Post. The search for a missing Anchorage Marisa ended in tragedy Monday. A forensic dive team discovered the body of 18-year-old Samantha Koenig in Mananuska Lake. Here's Fox News with details. She vanished back in February. She was last seen on surveillance video being led away from her coffee stand by a man with a gun. Police say Koenig likely died within hours of her abduction on February 1st. So who did it? KTU has more on the key suspect. Meanwhile, the person police say is involved in Koenig's February abduction, Israel Keys, remains in custody, but on a separate charge. Now police want to know if anyone saw Keys' truck around Matanuska Lake. The case has had an impact on the Anchorage community. MSNBC writes, supporters have held candlelight vigils for the missing teen, and volunteers have offered self-defense lessons to other Anchorage baristas. 
Police are not saying why or if they were led to the lake by any information. The Alaska Dispatch reports info about the case has been sparse. It's a case that has seen heavy public scrutiny with little information forthcoming on the intensive investigation. On Monday, Anchorage Police Chief Mark Mew brought the speculation to an end. CNN reports a medical examiner will perform an autopsy to confirm the identity, but police do believe it is Koenig's body. For the Huffington Post, I'm Blake Hansen.